Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This video is the beginning of a series about the dark truth about what's happening on planet Earth. This video is going to be about the spying capabilities that the U.S. government and private contractors and other organizations have, the capabilities and the operations that they're able to achieve through technology. The government is monitoring private phone calls, your children and my children's private phone calls, and tracking who their associates are. Every means of communication in this country, everything, is being watched by, by the federal government. Uh, tiny little microchips that were implanted in motherboards. That Along with government targets, the chips were reportedly also installed in equipment destined for Apple during manufacturing in China. So what I'm going to do here, I was actually struggling to try to figure out how I can frame this particular video. And what I decided that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and show you several clips from some whistleblowers and other media sources talking about what is known in the public, the capabilities of the U.S. government and their partners and their private contractors that they work with in industry, both technology companies and hardware manufacturer companies, that they are able to basically design systems that allow them to spy on everyone everywhere. Now... I want to mention a couple of things. I want to mention the all-seeing eye, okay? Now, this is some elusive, esoteric concept where, oh, there's like, you know, God has the all-seeing eye and he can see everything. And then, you know, there's this idea that uh, the devil co-opted this capability so he can also see everything. This is treason. Now, the question is, is that is that just some mythological concept or is that an actual fact is there actually an all-seeing eye can they achieve the capabilities of an all-seeing eye through technology and the answer to that is yes who owns this technology who has the ability to see everything everywhere going back for at least a decade possibly longer going back 10 20 years beautiful unethical dangerous You've turned every cell phone in Gotham into a microphone. And a high-frequency generator receiver. You took my sonar concept and applied it to every phone in the city. With half the city feeding you sonar, you can image all of Gotham. This is wrong. What I can say is there are many ways to surveil each other now, unfortunately. Do you believe uh, there was that an, was... There was an article this week that talked about how you can surveil someone through their phones, through their, uh, certainly through their television sets, uh, any number of different ways, and microwaves that turn into cameras, et cetera, and microwaves that turn into cameras, et cetera, and microwaves that turn into cameras, et cetera. Who has the capability and the power to leverage the technology to create an all-seeing eye? And how does that tie into the CIA and the NSA and all the spying capabilities that the US government and their private contractors how does this all tie into their capabilities? Now, there's a lot of talk in the media, um, especially 2017, 2018, and now we're in 2019. There's been a lot of talk about how the U.S. government has the capability to spy on virtually everyone through the technology, through the webcams or the cameras on your cell phone, the microphones. They collect the data off of Facebook and all your other Internet activity, as well as they're able to read your emails and basically virtually see everything you do on the internet. But it goes far, far, far beyond that. In fact, what I'm going to tell you is unbelievable, but it's absolutely true. And this technology has really just gotten implemented and is in full effect right now. Since 2001, after 9-11, the U.S. government implemented programs to be, to be able to spy on everybody everywhere. And through their tech partners, they have systematically put a system into place that literally gives them the all-seeing eye. They can see into your home. They can see all of your internet activity. They know everything you do on the internet. They can hear what you're doing through your microphone and see you through your camera, but it goes beyond that. We're talking about technology that allows them to see into your home, even if you don't even have a computer or a cell phone or a tablet or a smart TV, even if you don't have any of that technology in your home, they can still see and hear in your home. Yes, it sounds insane, but it's true. They have the technology to build the all-seeing eye, and they do that through the smoke detectors. They do that through every single smoke detector that 
is installed. After 9-11, there was a mandate to replace all smoke detectors throughout the U.S., and this program has been implemented throughout the rest of the world. The smoke detectors broadcast and receive unique microwave frequencies. Okay, so what that means is that the smoke detectors are actually sending out a constant signal similar to your Wi-Fi router, but it's on a much different frequency range that is much better at penetrating through walls. This is a government-only frequency range, which means the government and its tech partners are the only people who have access to not only creating these signals, but also receiving and reading the signals. Now, your smart, your, all of your electronics, including your computer, your tablet, your cell phone, your smart TVs, and any other modern technology, these quote-unquote appliances and devices, they all connect seamlessly through embedded chips that are in the modern technology. They connect to the smoke detectors. What if I told you that there was a special chip in your computer that has absolute control over your entire system, is remotely accessible, has secret proprietary code that you can't look at, and there's no way to disable it? Well, it's true, and it's actually pretty scary. The smoke detectors then send all activity that is occurring on your appliances and devices. It sends it to the cell phone towers and to satellite receivers. And the NSA has the capability, even if you're not connected to the internet through your own personal network, all of your modern technology is seamlessly connecting to the smoke detectors, which then connect to cell phone towers and to satellites. And they are able to see what you're doing on your computer and on your TV and on your tablet, even if you are personally not connected to the internet through your own connection. Because we even know exactly who is sitting at the keyboard. WikiLeaks publishing what it claims are documents from the CIA, apparently the largest intelligence publication in history. What these documents show, if in fact they are authentic, are some of the more intimate details of the CIA's cyber espionage effort. It talks about the agency's global covert hacking program that WikiLeaks says included malware and the ability to hack into smartphones, even smart TVs. It went on to say that a source that provided these documents was concerned of the CIA's hacking capabilities and it exceeded its mandated powers and perhaps exceeded public oversight. Welcome to my chambers. When judges join the judiciary, they take an oath to uphold the Constitution. The Constitution is the supreme law of the land. Their job as federal judges is to determine if a statute either by the way it's written or the manner of its enforcement is conflicting with the Constitution. And if it is, it is their duty to invalidate the statute or to stop the enforcement. Judge Kavanaugh, as a federal appellate judge, ruled that the Constitution somehow permits warrantless spying on every mobile device and laptop and desktop in the United States of America. This is contrary to the Fourth Amendment. The Fourth Amendment to the Constitution, the supreme law of the land, says the government can only surveil you if it has a warrant, and a warrant can only be obtained from the federal judge, and a federal judge can only issue a warrant based upon probable cause of crime. Judge Kavanaugh ruled that there is an exception to the Fourth Amendment if the government wants intelligence information rather than criminal evidence. So he ruled that if the government wants to look at your personal, political, financial, legal, even intimate information or data on your computer, it can do so without a warrant if its purpose is to obtain intelligence. This intelligence exception to the Fourth Amendment exists only in Judge Kavanaugh's mind. It does not exist in the Fourth Amendment. The ongoing NSA revelations yield more information about the government's secret spying program. His name is Russell Tice, and he served 20 years within various government intelligence agencies, including the NSA. In 2005, Tice blew the whistle on the NSA engaging in unlawful and unconstitutional surveillance of American citizens. What did you see that made you come out and blow the whistle initially? Well, the first thing I saw was I'm a satellite system specialist, so with the things that I was doing with satellites, I found out sort of inadvertently that uh, American citizens were being um, spied upon 
by our space capabilities. So. You've alleged that the NSA abuses go far beyond what people are even talking about right now. How far does it go, Russ? Well, it, it goes very far because initially what I saw was uh, they were targeting news organizations, they were char targeting, targeting U.S. companies that did international business, they were charging, uh, looking at financial institutions, but they were also going after um, the State Department and uh, Secretary of State Colin Powell at the time, and they were going after high-ranking military generals, and that was just with my space capabilities that I saw. Now later, when I got together with colleagues, and we started to put together the terrestrial side, that's the side that is being done with all those nodes all over the country with the fiber optics and that sort of thing. Then we found out that it got much worse. They went after law firms and lawyers. They went after um, more generals. Uh, General Petraeus was one of the guys. It seemed like right about that three-star level was they were going after admirals and generals. They went after the Supreme Court, of which I held uh, Judge Alito's paperwork in my hand, numbers associated with Judge Alito that someone had put into the system that NSA used to spy on Judge Alito. And let's just break this down a little bit because these are explosive allegations right now that I have not heard anyone talk about before, that there are actually orders that you personally saw in your hands to wiretap Judge Alito, high-ranking intelligence officers, David Petraeus, Barack Obama. Wannabe Senator Barack Obama. At that time, he wasn't even a senator. He, he um, had won his primary in Illinois. And I think maybe the catalyst, and I don't, I'm not sure, was the fact that he had just done a big speech at the Democratic uh, Convention. So at any rate, uh, I didn't, uh, when I left NSA, I did that in, uh, at the end of October 2001 because they started spying on individuals and not groups of bad guys, okay? So that meant they were scooping up everything from everybody in the world. And you've also said that this is not just in their congressional offices. I mean, we're talking about home surveillance and personal. Correct. This, is, this would be, for, for a senator or a congressman, it would be personal phone numbers associated, but we would find that it would be associated with family members, especially wives or, or spouses, mm -hmm. you know, the other direction. I guess the next Inclusive. question is, who is, it, who is administering the surveillance? That's a good question. I don't know the answer to that. Um, it looked like... The, inf the, the plugging in of these phone numbers was being done in the evenings at NSA. So almost it was like being done on the sly, even so that most NSA employees did not know what was going on. Now, a high-level person at NSA told me this was being directed from the vice president office. That would be Vice President Dick Cheney. Now, I don't know that for sure, but that's what I was told from a very senior person at NSA. So a high-level Bush administration official. Why was it being done? I mean, I, the first thing that comes to my mind is blackmail. I don't know the answer to that either. Um, what do you think? I mean, based on your experience, Russ, Well. What, what could the reason be to be wiretapping and spying on people like Obama, Judge Alito, Petraeus? I think you hit the word. Uh, you know, to me, I don't know for sure, but that would be a means of control. If you were to look... And, and be able to listen to everybody's conversation for years on end, for, for a period of time, you, you could probably find out perhaps some salacious information that could be used to control that individual. Now, you know, if, say, it's the intelligence community, is there some kind of leverage that's being placed on our three branches of government to make sure that the intelligence community is, is gets what they want? In other words, is the intelligence community running this country, not, not our government? Um, that's and I guess that begs the question, what, is there some sort of shadow government at play? I mean, are we talking about the military-industrial complex here? What do you think? As an insider and through all your research and people that you've talked to, who's running the show here, Russ? Who's running the show here, Russ? The upper echelon of the intelligence, of the intelligence community that is running this show. But what, what's different about this is this, this is at the Orwellian scale. This is the, the everything scale. This isn't just Richard, Richard Nixon going after a few you know, enemies list. This is everybody and everything. NSA is literally tapping every communication, every digital communication in this country. Content, not just, not just the metadata, the content. And, and when they're saying, well, it's not that far, once again, they are lying. They, are, they, they continue to lie about the full capability. I decided I was going to tell the media that 
NSA was going after journalists and news organizations, and there seemed to be no interest whatsoever from the media that I was telling that NSA was going after you. There must be some other interest that was making sure the media was not covering this. But now we have the proof that what I've said in the past is true, and they want Snowden bad because he's now codified the truth of what is going on with the National Security Agency. So every means of communication in this country, everything is being watched by, by the federal government. And that is Orwellian, and that is a trademark of a police state. The station, which has tapped into the global echelon system of a spying network that taps into the five eyes. This is a global spying network that's made up of the United States, New Zealand, the UK, Canada, and Australia. Ever since Edward Snowden blew the whistle on the PRISM surveillance system, more and more people have been questioning just how deep the government spying program goes, and they're starting to take measures to protect themselves, like, and also by blocking the cameras on your laptops. The system also taps into the NSA, the National Security Agency, which we now know is watching everything you are doing online, your Google searches, they can read your emails, they can listen to your telephone calls. In fact, every Every conversation you've had, every text message, every communication within the past decade at least is being held in databases such as these facilities like this one right here behind me. And then Edward Stone comes out and says it's upstream surveillance. Now John McAfee says that the E911 chip is the actual chip that does it. I talked about the VPOC chip which you haven't even heard about nobody has even talked about this chip a variable power on chip which turns your phone on control your phone vpocs variable variable power on control chip that are being put in phones so even if your phone is off they would have the power to turn it back on. Uh, tiny little microchips that were implanted in motherboards that were then sent uh, into American firms' products uh, and then went on to uh, high-level government and corporate offices around the country, was able to install these tiny, tiny microchips that could open sort of Trojan horse-style back doors into the hardware itself uh, that's in these data centers around the country, and that would allow to open the door and get in. So Okay, so as you can see, there's a lot of spying happening on this planet from the United States government and their private contractors, the NSA, the CIA, as well as, you know, you've heard of the Illuminati and other secret societies who are infiltrated into corporations and into government contractors hired by the government. And based on their connections, they're actually able to access all of this information. So it's not just the government that's spying on everybody, but it's actual corporations that are able to spy on people and to sell people's information to other corporations and other unknown entities to literally spy on virtually everyone everywhere. Now, the spying is not preventing all of the bad things that are happening on this planet, from the human trafficking to the vast amounts of child molestations that are occurring within the Catholic Church and other organizations. There's a lot of really bad things happening on this planet. In the last 50 years, IQ points have been going down 7 to 10 points per generation. So literally people have been getting dumber and dumber. At the same time, obesity has been skyrocketing. So people are getting fatter and fatter. The population is getting dumber and fatter. Nobody is stopping this. Nobody's stopping the MSG, which is a neurotoxin, which causes obesity, makes people sick. Nobody's stopping the fluoride, which is known to dumb people down. There's a Harvard study showing that fluoride reduces, significantly reduces the IQ of young children that are exposed, entire populations that are exposed to fluoride. For example, they're putting fluoride in the water. And any area where they're putting high levels of fluoride in the water, there are reduced IQs in those areas. So it's, it's literally causing people to be dumbed down. 
The MSG and the aspartame are known to cause obesity and to make people sick. So all of this spying on everyone is not preventing these terrible things that are going into the food, in the air, and in the water. At the same time, they're not preventing the human trafficking where there's countless cases of thousands upon thousands of children going missing. For example, there's an article from the BBC showing that over 10,000 children have gone missing in the last couple of years. Uh, there's human trafficking where people are being put into box carts, into trucks, and literally being shipped as if they're cattle to some unknown destination. Nation. You know, nobody's talking about any of this. Uh, so, you know, the spying is not preventing the terrible things on this planet from happening. The never-ending wars seem to continue. Nobody's talking about the wars in the Middle East, the uh, vast devastation, the millions upon millions of people that are literally being misplaced or killed every year from all of these wars in the Middle East. Nobody's talking about that, even though they have the most advanced spy technology available. Somehow they can't seem to get that under control. Uh, it's not preventing crime or, you know, terrorism. As you heard in some of the testimony, there's a high probability that the spying is being used to manipulate and control and not to prevent uh, bad things from happening. It's being used as a tool for manipulation, control, and power. Okay, now the question is, is who's running the planet? Why are all these things being, all these bad things being allowed to happen? Why are there secret societies that are deliberately poisoning the planet, killing people, and destroying the planet? And who's really running the show? That is what this series is about, finding out exactly what's happening on this planet. Stay tuned. I will also be diving deeper because I've been constantly investigating and looking for the answers and getting different articles and resources together to really present exactly what is happening on this planet. And it's actually very scary what's happening on this planet. We are in a lot of trouble. We need to unite as one peoples to fight the evil that is penetrating humanity. I'm not going to get into details of exactly what's happening in this particular video. You can look in the description for a couple links to some of my earlier videos where I attempt to make the connections. As well, at the end of this video, I will have a couple links to those earlier videos. But I will also be putting together some new videos because I've come across some more information. I've been aggressively researching to try and find out exactly what's happening. I have some resources and some articles that I'm going to be putting together to really pinpoint exactly what's happening on this planet planet, why the spying is occurring, why there's never-ending wars, why there's human trafficking, and what exactly is happening. And to be honest with you, from what I'm seeing, my preliminary information, this is very scary. We need to get together. We need to spread the word. We need to spread the message. This video is being distributed under education nonprofit, so feel free to copy this video and share it on your own platforms. Feel free to give me a thumbs up, and if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Feel free to subscribe, because as I said, I have a lot of new videos that I'm going to be putting together very shortly explaining exactly what's happening on this planet. So feel free to subscribe, feel free to share, give me a thumbs up, and definitely you can copy this and put it on your own platform and spread the message, this planet is not safe. Stay tuned, I'll have more soon. Thanks for watching.